You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Present Tense, Future Perfect with your host, Marion Estienne. How are organizations, societies, and individuals being impacted by changes in our world? How do we develop leaders to respond to them? And what changes can we make today to have an impact on tomorrow? To help facilitate these and other questions, please welcome the host of Present Tense, Future Perfect, Marion Estienne. Hello and welcome back. This is Present Tense, Future Perfect, and I'm your host, Marian Estien. This is the Bold and Brave Media Global Network in partnership with TuneIn Radio. Now, I'll be hosting this show for the next 12 weeks and have asked a number of guests to join me who I believe will inspire, provoke, and educate about what I consider to be a turning point in our history. And as I said before, I welcome your comments and your questions. And if you'll email me at marion at 360global.com, I will respond to your questions or comments during the following week's show. So that's marion, M-A-R-I-O-N, at the number 360global, all lowercase, one word, dot com. And you can also learn more about me from my website, www.360global.com. So we're on this journey together to see if we can find some answers to our personal dilemmas as well as our organizational dilemmas in a fast-changing world. We need to understand what's pushing change in our lives before we can devise solutions on how to deal with them. So join me as we explore what's happening in the present so that we can design a more perfect future. For the past two weeks, we've discussed the importance of neuroscience. First, we looked at its influence on management and leadership development. And this is important because one of the overriding concerns in this series of programs is whether or not we are developing leaders with the capabilities and mindsets to confront the challenges, which I've named as globalization, innovation, climate change, and technology. Last week, we discussed neuroscience, but in this time, its connection to mindfulness. In an age of acceleration and velocity of change, what keeps us grounded and in touch with our humanity? Well, this week, we're going to go in a completely different direction. My guest is Dr. Felix Mosner, director of Swiss Next Boston, and I'll I'll introduce him in a few more minutes, but I'd I'd like us to look a little bit at the effects of technology on our societies as well as our economies. And is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Or is there a bit of both? And like most things, there's a bit of both. We're going to also look at how one country, Switzerland, is managing it. Now, technology has introduced us to the paradox of man versus machine. According to the authors Bryn Jolson and McAfee, who wrote a book called The Second Machine Age, labor and machines were for the most part, up till the present, complementary. Humans had the brain, which guided the machines, and the machines were the muscle. Well, there's a change that's been occurring in the last 15 to 20 years, is that machines are increasingly capable of taking on the cognitive tasks. So rather than just complementing men's brains, they are becoming the control systems. The power to decide to what end 
the mechanized process can be applied in many instances as well by machines as by men. Now, Brynjolfsson and McAfee argue that the driving force behind this change is the exponential growth of computing power. Thinking about the development of the microchip, the speed of change is moving to a higher level and the rate of change is also getting faster. Technological advances have given us many wonders, such as advanced communication systems, well, just think the iPhone didn't exist 10 years ago. Self-driving cars, advances in medical equipment to diagnose and cure diseases, and e-learning capabilities. Advanced technologies driven by digitization have also been good for our economies. In a study of data-driven decision-making, the authors found out that one particular relationship stood, up, stood out. The more companies characterize themselves as data-driven, the better they performed on objective measures of financial and operational results. On average, 5% more productive and 6% more profitable than their competitors. So eventually, after controlling for other factors, this economic importance was reflected in measurable increases in stock market valuations. So far, so good. Or is it? The introduction of advanced technologies, specifically digitally driven processes, have left us with two important consequences. Now, I'm going to discuss what I see those two important consequences at the end of the show. For right now, to talk about technology and Swiss Next, I want to introduce Dr. Felix Mosner. Uh, Dr. Mosner is the director of Swiss Next Boston. He is also the counsel of the Consulate of Switzerland. He has a master and a doctor degree from ETH Zurich and the University of Tokyo, Asia's leading university. As an engineer and a scientist, he majored in robotics, MEMS, and nanotechnologies. Dr. Bosner also worked in two consulting firms in IT and executive search and two blue chip companies, high tech and financial, at senior management levels before joining the Swiss Knowledge Network. So before accepting his position in Boston, Dr. Bosner was the head of the Science and Technology Office Tokyo at the Embassy of Switzerland in Japan promoting Swiss science, technology, and education in Japan, and interfacing between Swiss and Japanese governments, universities, R&D institutions, and companies. Together with the U.S. Embassy, he also held the presidency of the Science and Technology Diplomatic Circle, which is comprised of more than 80 diplomatic missions and affiliates, such as the National Science Foundation, and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And that was in Tokyo since 2005. Several awards and grants underline his proactive commitments. So with that recommendation, could I, could I introduce and welcome Dr. Mosner to our show? Thank you, Felix, for being here. Hello, Hi, Felix. Thank you very much for the very kind introduction, and I'm very, very happy to be on the show. Great. Thank you for being here. I'm glad you took the time to join us today. I know you have a very busy schedule. Well, I thought to begin with, what we should talk about is Swissnex. Most people will not have heard of it. Do you want to describe it to our audience and tell us yes, how sir. it dif- – go ahead, go ahead. Yes, uh, absolutely. And Marion, thank you once again uh, very much uh, for the introduction and uh, also giving a glimpse uh, on what is Swissnex doing. Um, so as you already have uh, indicated, uh, so Swissnex, um, just maybe to start with the name, Swissnex is not Swissnex, it's Swissnex, so it comes from Nexus. Uh, Nexus is a Latin word and it means, uh, it means a space where people meet. 
Yes. And, uh, you know what, that. Felix, I'm going to have to interrupt you there because we're going to have to break for a commercial. So could we just hold on to that and you can talk more about the meaning of the place where people meet in a couple of minutes? Thank you. Absolutely. This is Marion Estienne, present tense, future perfect. And this is the BBM Global Network Radio and tune in radio and stay tuned to hear more about Swiss Next. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back. This is Marian STN with Present Tense, Future Perfect. And I'm interviewing today Dr. Felix Mosner, who is the director of Swiss Next Boston and the Council of the Consulate of Switzerland. So, Felix, I interrupted you when you were talking about the Latin word nexus. Do you want to tell the audience more about what Swiss Next is about? Uh, yes, absolutely. So Nexus is a part of uh, the word Swiss Nex, and uh, Nexus, as mentioned previously, is a place, is a space where people meet and connect. And so this is all about uh, when you look into Swiss Nex, you also have the other part, uh, Swiss, that obviously comes from Switzerland. So we are a science consulate here in Boston, so located between MIT and Harvard. And uh, we have been established in the year 2000. And um, we are one of, um, of a network of five uh, Swiss nexus around the world. So Boston here is the first one. So we are already in this sense um, uh, a historic place, uh, only 17 years old, but already historic in terms of that we are the first science consulate in the world. Then uh, shortly later, San Francisco at Silicon Valley, we opened another Swiss Next. Then in Shanghai, in Bangalore, in India, and also in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And so basically, uh, maybe to come back, um, what uh, we do is uh, uh, given the fact that uh, our mission is built around science, so we do uh, many uh, connecting the dots uh, activities in education, research, and innovation and also art science, so between Switzerland and United States in our case. So we do the eastern part of United States and uh, also the eastern part of Canada. And uh, we have um, a very broad audience, um, but uh, I would say since our location is here in Boston, um, most of our activities are probably in this range. But we also have, um, and since we had a very nice demand, uh, we also opened an office in New York, ah. and our New York office is is uh, at Wall Street, for example. So this also shows a little bit 
Ça m'a fait... <rire> yeah. uh, yes. Um, well, it's such an innovative idea to have a Swiss, well, not a Swiss, a science consulate. So what gave the Swiss government or the, the scientific community the idea to promote this kind of an exchange? Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. I, I think this is a very, very uh, important question because it's the starting point uh, of uh, everything. So, as you may know, in the past, our consulate was in Boston. And um, so we had a, a very innovative uh, a group of people back in Switzerland. So it's a, it's a very old bank. Um, they celebrated uh, uh, 200 years of existence. And they said, we really would like to, to, to set a, a symbol for the future. We want to be trendy. We want to set an innovative uh, signal. And uh, they were actually looking in direction Boston to see whether um, it would be possible to set up a hub where we could celebrate the innovation, showcase uh, what Switzerland has to offer. And basically, it was a very brave trial at that time. As you may know, Switzerland is not very risk-taking. And exactly. uh, I'm, I'm, yes. personally, I'm personally very, very happy that uh, uh, there were innovators, uh, innovators back in Switzerland taking this uh, lead and they bought the property here in Cambridge. So we moved mm -hmm. from Boston to Cambridge, so over the Charles River and set up uh, the location here, uh, not far from Harvard University and also not too distant from MIT, so in between. And so this was the starting point, um, so to say. In terms of your involvement in the scientific community and then in international relations, I think it's fascinating that you did your degrees in the sciences and then are working in a, a relationship capacity here. What drew you into this type of work? Uh, well, basically, it's, uh, I, I think it has uh, come from various um, uh, experiences in the past. Uh, I mean, having done a lot of uh, work in the academics, so I did um, finally my postdoc and so that I really wanted to do something in the private sector. Uh, I did quite some work in the private sector and so actually there's a, a combination of it that uh, should and could be very useful in my current position. Uh, moving forward uh, with Swissnex and uh, I definitely have to say, I mean, it's, it's a wonderful uh, um, facility, it's a wonderful team. Uh, being able here to work together, and um, I mean, on a on a daily basis, we work like a governmental startup. So we test new approaches. Uh, we are able to maybe also on certain scales make mistakes as well. So we do make mistakes here, mm -hmm. and um, I would say we we really test new approaches, and hopefully the successful ones. Uh, we also can feed back to our government, and uh, obviously also improve. Uh, the uh, processes, maybe some ideas uh, back in the government. So, for example, we were one of the first who used Facebook in the past, and uh, now also the government uh, readily has taken it up, and uh, it's used in many um, offices and uh, locations around the world as well, in embassies, Swiss embassies, for example. So that's only one example. Oh, that's good. I was just, that was my next question is to give us a few examples. But are you saying from that, that sometimes there are ideas here in America that you communicate back to Switzerland? And then does that happen vice versa? Are there Swiss innovations that you can bring to the U.S. or introduce? Uh, absolutely. Um, so this is uh, our main focus that we introduce um, Switzerland to our audience here in Boston and uh, also in New York. And so in this sense, um, I would like to introduce a couple of uh, projects that we did in the past. And, okay, uh, Felix, we're going to break. I, I'm going to stop you there because we have to break. And then I think that's a great way to start up our next segment is with the projects that you've introduced.
So please stay tuned because I want to hear what these projects are. This is Marion Estienne. This is Present Tense Future Perfect on the BBM Global Network Radio, Tune In Radio. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Welcome back, and thanks for joining Present Tense and Future Perfect. We're interviewing on the subject of technology, Dr. Felix Mosner, who is the director of Swissnex in Boston and a council of the Council of Switzerland. Uh, Dr. Mosner described something about what Swissnex is. Swiss Next does. And right now we're going to ask him about the kinds of projects that they're beginning involved in. So Felix, do you want to pick up where you took off where you left off before? Uh, absolutely. Um, so it has to do actually uh, with our dreams within Swiss Next. So this also defines the projects that we are doing. So we have um, four streams. So one is uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. Another one, the second one is um, academic relations. A third one is art science. And the last stream is obviously our office in New York. So we have roughly 90 events per year. And um, you very kindly asked me uh, previously uh, among the 90 events, uh, what were maybe some of the the major projects that we did uh, recently and currently. So one of them, and I'm still very much impressed, is that we could show, for example, one uh, of the very uh, big highlights of last year is the um, completion of the Gotthard Base Tunnel. So it's the longest tunnel in the world. So it's an unbelievable 35 miles long, and there's a lot of technology in it. And so we are very happy to have a presentation of this gigantic project here. And even more because uh, we had a person who was very involved, and this was uh, Herbert Einstein. So he's a professor at MIT, a Swiss, with the name Einstein. Oh. And we were extremely happy that uh, actually he could uh, um, explain about the project in an extremely competent way. And so we could show uh, one of the innovative aspects. Another um, is um, also very nice what we do once per year is uh, the World Economic Forum debrief. And uh, as a science consulate, um, Swissnex, we focus obviously on the tech aspect. And yes, so we yes. were talking about climate change. We were talking about uh, um, neuroscience and as well as the importance of negotiations. So this was a, 
I talk when it was an off the record event, so we got a lot of insights uh, during the WEF meeting in Davos. Um, so that's another. And you also mentioned at the beginning uh, about neuroscience. So that's another yes. uh, project yes. that we showed here. It's, uh, for example, human brain. Uh, that's a, a huge European project based in uh, Geneva. And um, it has a 1 billion euro funding. And we wow. were able to show it here uh, mostly to um, academics from Harvard, MIT, and many more universities. And I think it's a good way to involve the audience. And it's also an excellent way to reach back to Europe in this sense also to, because it's located in Switzerland, to Switzerland. And it uh, was a wonderful event, uh, so to say. Um, I think um, another uh, highlight that we also recently had is the MIT European Career Fair, where we are traditionally be with a Swiss pavilion. So we talk to the amazing pool of talents here in uh, Massachusetts. And um, obviously, there are always uh, some of the talents who wish to to relocate back to Switzerland. So that's why it's called the European Career Fair. And um, there we have a, a, a good crowd of uh, Swiss universities pre uh, presenting uh, their offers, as well as Swiss companies. Uh, so, for example, among the Swiss universities, we also had a very unique project, is the Disney Research. And that's also one of the projects where we are very happy. So Disney, so maybe you know the theme parks or Disneyland, Disney World and so on. They have a project in Zurich and they do research with uh, ETH, so the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. Oh, what is the subject of that? Yeah, go ahead. I was curious, so the, the subject, would it, would it be about education or entertainment? Uh, it's, a, it's a combination, actually. So you make the use of science to in, in the ent entertainment industry. For example, they got an Oscar, a tech Oscar, for the animation of smoke. In uh, Maybe you have seen some of the animation movies. And this is one of the most complex uh, um, items in an animation movie to make smoke, to appear like smoke. Oh. And so this, for example, has been developed in Switzerland. Um, so we well, also that... hope for some... No, I interrupted only to say that, interestingly enough, uh, last night I was at the School of Public Health for Boston University, and I was invited by my neighbor, who's also a friend, and they were people talking about education Entertainment, it, and I might have that term wrong, but it is about getting education and entertainment intertwined in such a way as to involve the audience. In particular, they were talking about um, an MTV show called Sugar, which I have never seen, but it was a way of discussing um, and getting people involved, young people, into reproductive health. So it, it, it's just amazing how the technology reaches out into so many sectors. But I'm sorry, I think okay. I cut you off there. So, No, no, uh, please. Uh, I think it's one of the very important uh, areas. So it also goes in line with gamification. So that's mm -hmm. another term for it. So that uh, you you have a natural motivation to do something, and so that goes uh, in a, in a similar di direction like uh, mobile phones that are, are using a lot of uh, gamification uh, approaches. Yes. So, for example, yeah. Uh, so there um, are obviously uh, other, uh, for, for example, other projects at the moment. For example, we have um, um, a delegation here from the. Um, University of Bern and St. Gallen from Switzerland. So it's an executive, executive MBA program. And we are discovering mm -hmm. Boston. So this is one of the missions uh, at the current project. 
Okay. Listen, I'm going to stop you there. We have to take a little break. I want to ask you more about your successes um, at, at the consulate. So this is Marion Estienne. Uh, present tense, future perfect. Please stay tuned because we have a lot more to discover here uh, with Dr. Mosner, our guest. And we're on the BBM Global Network Radio, Tune In Radio. We'll be back very shortly. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Welcome back to our program, Present Tense, Future Perfect. This is Marion Estienne on the BBM Global Network Radio, Tune In Radio. And we're talking to Dr. Felix Mosner, who is the director of Swiss Next Boston and the Council of the Consulate of Switzerland. Uh, Felix, you started to talk about your visitors from St. Gallen and the University of Bern. Um, do you want to tell us a bit more about the connections that Swiss Next has to education and what the purpose is? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think it's a very good uh, example. So we uh, host uh, uh, several delegations during the year. And so as we talk uh, today, we have a, a group of 20 executive MBA students with us. So they are from Bern and St. Gallen from Switzerland. And um, since the, um, the theme of the um, education is innovation management, and we discussed this yesterday during a very uh, nice uh, reception evening, that uh, actually it's one of the main spots in the United States uh, to say where innovation is lived. I mean, as you know, uh, Massachusetts is spending 6% of its GDP on, sci- on R&D, and it's, it's, it's one of the, the main uh, pillars uh, where innovation is lived, so same as in New York or in Silicon Valley. And so what yeah. they do here is, on one hand, um, they learn from professors, so they have uh, lectures, for example, with uh, Babson College. But on the other hand, they also go out and visit, uh, for example, companies. So Sotax uh, is one of the companies. Uh-huh. Uh, but yes. they also visit... Um, uh, maybe you remember our um, uh, chairman of the uh, Swiss American Chamber of C- uh, Commerce. Uh, so it's his, actually, his company, very successful. And yes. uh, they are going to visit. Uh, but they also visit, uh, for example, Candle Square. Uh, they uh, ha- have an opportunity to, to be there at the Cambridge Innovation Center to see how it's function. And uh, that's only the peak of uh, their program, so it's, 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 it's a lot. So you also asked me uh, what we do with the universities in, in terms of uh, how to connect in the uh, education space. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And 
We, we do a lot. For example, we have 14 mandates with uh, Swiss universities. So we create uh, visibility here in Cambridge. We, on the other hand, we also have mandates and uh, um, that came uh, to the final um, when we were able, for example, to um, make an agreement. And uh, one of the highlights was to have an agreement between MIT and ETH Zurich. So that one has been signed uh, back in the year 2014. And it also includes student exchanges. So I, I think um, we were also very helpful uh, to be able to have such an agreement. And uh, it's also for us an honor that uh, MIT is regarding ETH as, it, as its peer university. Mm, yes. Yes, this is uh, one of the examples. We also have um, programs with Harvard University. The medical school has a program with uh, EPFL, which is the sister university of uh, ETH Zurich. And um, they send um, students uh, to the Harvard Medical School to make research on the hearing, uh, hearing human hearing um, and um, neuroscience in this sense as well. So this is only two examples. Um, um, maybe when looking at the broad range, for us it's very important that we support the activities, the exchanges of professors, the exchanges of faculty, the students, and uh, once a year we make a big event, invite all Swiss students here in Boston. And we also try to have a strong link with the alumni networks, what we also have in Boston. So we have, we have roughly 12 uh, alumni networks as well, very active. That made me think of um, your involvement in the Pan Mass Challenge, not uh, not the physical sport, but there are. Are you involved in any Swiss Next? Not you. I'm sorry. Involved in any startups? Because the Boston Cambridge area, especially with the emphasis on innovation, there's a lot of pharmaceuticals here, a lot of biotechs, and a lot of startups. So. How does that kind of facilitation work for the consulate? Uh, no, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful place here in Boston, especially when you do uh, a lot of activities around startups. And uh, thank you very much also for mentioning it. Uh, we most probably already welcomed 400 startups from Switzerland uh, to, uh, to our doorsteps uh, here in, at, at Swissnext. So we link it up with various programs. So we have here at Swissnex, we have um, uh, two programs. Uh, so one is the Venture Leaders program that will come in June again. So where we have uh, 20 startups coming from Switzerland. So 10 come here to Massachusetts in the life science field. So these are the best um, selected uh, life science startups that will discover uh, Boston in a boot camp of uh, 10 days and another group will go to New York in the field of fintech and so another 10 will experience uh, in a boot camp uh, what's happening in New York so uh -huh. these are the large programs what we have and we also uh, welcome on an individual basis um, also startups to discover Boston or even to set up uh, their offices here in the United States, so we help for market entry. As you know, Switzerland is a very small country, and yes. uh, our passion is to guide startups to grow successfully uh, beyond the Swiss borders. And obviously, the U.S. is a is a great market uh, also for the startups to enter. And we, we have a great passion to help them. And uh, last but not least, also very important to mention is we have a great uh, relationship with Mass Challenge. Mm -hmm. And Swissnex um, helped Mass Challenge greatly to set up offices um, in 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 Lausanne. So they are in Lausanne, and Mass Challenge has office uh, abroad in UK, in Israel, in Mexico, and we were the the third in a row. So we are very proud that we have uh, Mass Challenge uh, in Switzerland as well. So I think in terms of startups, we have a lot to offer. 
Um, I, I want to continue this with a couple of questions. So, audience, please stay tuned. We have to take a commercial break. This is Marian Estien, Present Tense Future Perfect. You're listening to the BBM Global Network Radio, Tune In Radio, and we'll be right back. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the Word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Oh, welcome back. Uh, this is Marion Estienne your host on Present Tense, Future Perfect. And this is the BBM Global Network Radio, TuneIn Radio. And we're talking to Dr. Felix Mosner. Uh, We were discussing the mass challenge and the number of startups not just coming to Massachusetts, but to other places in the United States. And we stopped at the point where I wanted to ask Felix about funding, where does the money come from for, for a startup, especially for a Swiss company coming to the United States? Yes, uh, I think that's a very important point. So what we can do is, and this is also with the support of the Swiss government, on one hand, when we look at the market entry camp, so we have a program with the Swiss government. So we, we are also part of the Swiss government, but um, so this is another unit. And uh, with this program, we helped um, the Swiss startups to enter the U.S. market, and um, they are provided with a stipend. So it's uh, it's not like this uh, that uh, we are fully funding a startup to be successful in the United States. What's, what's very important is we provide our network. We provide our experience and we give it actually to the startups so that uh, they are able to prosper here in the States and uh, to have a very successful entry. So once again, um, I think it's still mainly on the startup that they are able to find the funding. But often, the, uh, in, in, in most of the cases, the startup, they are very fine companies and uh, they are very capable to find money. So it's early stage, mid stage. So series uh, A and B, mm-hmm. even some of them make uh, IPO so uh, or are being sold by other companies. So uh, ba- basically the funding uh, question, we, we help in the initial stages to set foot in the United States. And um, also with the Venture Leaders Program, that is mostly um, um, uh, financed by uh, different uh, entities, so by universities, Swiss universities, but we also have a very big uh, donor uh, that, who is uh, actually uh, located here in, in Boston, and uh, we are also very uh, glad that uh, he's involved. So he, his name, for example, is uh, Hans-Jörg Wies, 
is also the person who is uh, at the Wies, uh, behind the Wies Institute at uh, Harvard University, and he has a great big heart for startups. And so ah. that's also the person that uh, he gives really support for this. Well, what kinds of products and services do the startups come here with? Um, well, the, you mean what the startups are seeking in services from Swissnex? Well, I, I was just thinking, are, are we talking about uh, technology that has to do with computers? Or are we talking about medical devices? Are we talking about startups that are involved in developing new uh, chem, uh, disease control medications? I was just interested in what fields the startups are trying to develop. Yes, so in the past... Um, um I mean, the Venture Leaders program was very broad, so we actually looked at uh, all different fields, uh, even, I mean, even nanotechnology, material science, uh, life sciences, of course, here for Boston, or even fintech, uh, so some insurance applications for mobile phones. But um, uh, since two years, we decided to focus, so we would like to have a, a, a good program, a very effective program, so for Boston, we focus on life sciences. And for New York, we focus on fintech. Uh, but um, for the other program, for the U.S. market entry camp, uh, as we call it, uh, we accept all uh, domains, all different direction of startups. So um, uh, it, it's hard to say, but I would say maybe most of the startups that come here, it's a mix of life science and also tech companies. Um, and uh, since, since also Boston is a very um, academic place. Um, they, the, the Bostonians, they love complex startups. So usually we <laughs> welcome the more complex, I would say the more complex uh, demanding startups. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, it, it's rather exciting living here for that reason. Now, the whole audience knows that we're in the Boston, Cambridge, Massachusetts area in the United States. Um, but I want at this point to sort of shift the discussion. And we've talked about with your with your role with your hat on as the the director of Swiss Next Boston, um, but now I'd like you to put the hat on about somebody who is a scientist. Um, I think that I was very impressed, and uh, for me, it was a whole new field. My training is as a social scientist. It was looking at this idea of how technology has been replacing, let us say, the control or the thinking functions of we humans. And so it introduces the subject of artificial intelligence. Now, this is something I think you've worked on in the past. And would you care to comment at all about artificial intelligence and where it is making an impact in our society and in our economy? Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. So, uh uh, I think you got it very well. I, I, I did actually, back uh, in the 1990s, I worked on neural networks. Uh, that is, um, I mean, it's a part of artificial intelligence and it's, uh, it has now a different name. It's called uh, machine learning or deep learning. So it's basically the same thing. Um, it's, at that time, it was not so effective because the computers were s slower than today. But mm -hmm. today's... Uh, are uh, extremely fast and it has a revival since the last, I would say, five years, definitely. Uh, so uh, artificial intelligence is now everywhere. Um, I think um, the most important is to, to think of it that it's a service. It makes your life simpler, it makes it easier. And so that's, I think that's the, the most important aspect to gain out of it. I mean, look at the mobile phone, if you, a smartphone, uh, it's called smartphone because it has artificial intelligence in it, so that, that's why it's called this way. And um, uh, it, it, it is for convenience, so basically whatever makes your life more productive or more convenient, uh, so there you have something in artificial intelligence behind it. And... Uh, 
Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very interesting future that is coming up, and uh, I think it's for the benefit uh, of uh, many um, uh, many societies levels on one hand, but on the other hand, I think we also have to have certain natural cautions that uh, we see the limitations as well. Uh, we have to break now for um, we have to break now and I'd like to come back and just let you finish that thought about the caution about what are the downsides before I conclude the show. So are you willing to stay with us for another few more minutes? Yes, of course. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, this is Marion STN present tense, future perfect. You're listening to the BBM Global Network TuneIn Radio. And we'll be right back with some conclusions about technology in our life today. Stay tuned. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back. You're listening to Dr. Felix Mosner on our program, Present Tense, Future Perfect. This is your host, Marian Estien, and you're listening to the BBM Global Network Radio, TuneIn Radio. Uh, on the break, Felix, you, you made a mention about Swiss Next before we go back to the idea of AI, about how projects are funded, which makes it different. Do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. So uh, Swissnax uh, has a very nice uh, feature, and uh, it's also part of uh, our way how we function. So it's called private-public partnership. So we actually our projects are uh, one third funded by our government uh, uh, project money, but on the other hand, uh, we are um, also asked by our government to find the other two thirds. Uh, of the funds that are needed for a project from external partners. So one uh, in this uh, regard is, uh, since we already talked about artificial intelligence, I can give an example. We have a series which is called The Future of Money. And uh, there we had uh, one event in this series was about artificial intelligence. And we talked uh, about the future of banking, the future of fintech, uh, and what um, artificial intelligence is doing. And for this event, uh, we had uh, um, a great support for external partners um, from the financial industry sector who helped us, for example, to, to have this event. And so we were able to have panelists from Switzerland, so we could... Uh, um, have them come to Boston and New York, and we added uh, our panelists uh, with panelists from 
uh, our region. Uh, so uh, here in Boston was from MIT, Harvard, and in New York was from, uh, from um, Columbia University. And it was really great to, to bring all the stakeholders together. And basically, it's the best when you have external partners on a project, you have to have an interesting project. And this is a key yes, um, yes. to trigger uh, interesting projects. So just to mention this as an example. Oh, I'd like to thank you so much, Felix, for being our guest today. It's been fascinating. And we know that you're moving on this summer. You're going to Shanghai, back to Asia, and uh, wish you all the best. I hope it's as successful there as you've made your, your experience here in Boston. And we shall miss you. Uh, thank you very much, Marion. It was a big, big pleasure to have this interview. Thank you. All right, then. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We have just a couple of minutes left in the show. And um, I mentioned in the beginning that perhaps there were some points of caution, as Felix mentioned. We didn't get to that with him. Um it, it, it's it's amazing that very often Switzerland is insulted, uh, but here you have this terrific idea, this innovative idea, coming forward from the little this little country who knows it needs to reach out, uh, and so I think that was a, a terrific explanation that Felix gave us. So we're going to close the show now. Um, but it's been very interesting talking to Dr. Bosner. Uh, please stay tuned next week. We will be with another guest. Um, and this is future, uh, present tense, future perfect. My name is Marion Estienne, and you are listening to the BBM Global Network Tune In Radio. And thank you for listening, and I hope you will continue. And if you want, email me, Marion at 360global.com. I'd love to hear from you. All right, then. Bye-bye. This has been Present Tense, Future Perfect with your host, Marion SDN. Join us each week as we explore the many aspects of leadership, globalization, and more on Marion SDN's Present Tense, Future Perfect. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.